I, I thought I'd do a little video diary. This is day one. Uh, and the reasons for doing that uh, is going to become apparent as I keep talking. I mean, um, those of you who know me will know that uh, I had cancer recently. That was a relapse of uh, high-grade non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, in order to treat that, I had to have some strong chemotherapy about 18 months ago. And then about a year ago, had a stem cell transplant. Now, that's all left me with not much of an immune system yet. It's still uh, growing from those donated stem cells. And um, what that's meant is that while all that's been happening, I've been told to practice social distancing, even aside from COVID-19 and coronavirus. So I've been staying away from mass gatherings from public places, haven't been able to go into shops and restaurants and cinemas and uh, stuff like that for a long time. But I have been able to stay at home and pretty much potter around as normal and uh, go on walks with my wife, go, go for dog walks and things like that. So long as there's, as there's not a, a huge number of people around, that's all been fine. What's happened over the last few days and uh, the last few weeks, the, the COVID-19 outbreak has swept around the world and is becoming more and more of a concern in, in the UK where I live. And um, I went on my blog a couple of days ago uh, saying how I wasn't necessarily worried too much about myself. Now, my family kind of thinks differently. Um, now I'm, you know, not out and about in public places to be in contact with people who may have the coronavirus, but I live in a busy household, I've got a large family, four kids, and you know, two of those work in a supermarket. Another one goes to a, a large college nearby. The other one goes to work on the train. And so they're all mingling with lots of different people around the place. And they're just worried they're going to pick it up. They're not going to know about it. They'll bring it home. Before you know it, they'll be coughing, getting the temperature, uh, and then I'll go down with it. And um, that means that they've sent me away on a little holiday. I'm actually filming this from my nephew's flat. He's very kindly, um, unbelievably kindly, uh, given up his flat for uh, an unknown length of time, a few weeks maybe, to allow me to stay here on my own, cut off from everybody else, not having any contact with anybody who could have the virus. So that takes a huge stress off my wife and my kids, because now, now they don't have to worry about picking it up and giving it to me. Um, because as we know, uh, for normal healthy people, it's not too much of a worry. The vast majority of people will feel ill and get better and life will go on. But it is dangerous for people like me. I mean, apologies for repeating this for those who've been following my story for a while, but my immune system judging by the figures, is no better than it was six months ago. Uh, and six months ago, I felt as fine as I look now, and I am fine. Um, and then suddenly, one day, my temperature went up, I phoned up the hospital, and they rushed me in and started giving me intravenous antibiotics. And that was the start of a three-month period where I was in and out of hospital, felt awful in between. Um, uh, in total, I spent about seven weeks in hospital being given intravenous antibiotics and all kind of antiviral drugs and uh, being really well looked after in isolation. So I know that it can easily happen and I know the theory that uh, my immune system is weak enough to uh, pick up this coronavirus and it would be quite dangerous. But it's still surreal. And it's still surreal being cut off from everybody 
in this one bedroom flat. It's a bit different, I have to say, from being in isolation in hospital. When you're in hospital in isolation, you still have nurses um, and doctors coming to see you several times a day, uh, interrupting your night's sleep to take your blood pressure and change the IV drip and things like that. People you basically chat with throughout the day and, and then you have visitors as well. So even in isolation in hospital, you still have human contact. But the idea in this uh, virus outbreak is that uh, people like me should be isolated and not see anybody because anybody could have the virus, anybody could pass it on to me. So the only way to guarantee not getting it is to not see anyone. It's all a bit surreal because if I look out the window, I can see people walking up and down the street. We haven't yet got to the stage of a uh, lockdown situation. Um, and so I'm in here. Everyone's going about the business outside. I know um, the family back home, hopefully, will be going about normal life as far as health service guidelines uh, go and just follow those. And actually doing this video diary is just a, a way of filling time and um, getting some practice at, at editing videos and uh, making things like this. And um, my aim is really to, to think about things in a way that's going to help you to get through this epidemic and to face whatever hardships uh, and upheavals you've got to face as well. So bye for now.